IK Multimedia have just announced the new iLoud Micro Monitor Pro Studio Monitors. But how pro is pro? This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. It's been about seven years since the original iLoud micro monitors were released and since then they've actually received a lot of praise from both the greats and my mate. And the main message seems to be that they exceed expectations for monitors of this size. Now I've had these pro versions for the last few weeks and I do have some important opinions to give you about them towards the end of this video. But first of all, let's take a look at the features. In many ways, these pro versions are quite similar physically to the originals. I think they look quite similar. They're both two-way monitors with a woofer and a tweeter and they're both front ported. They're also still made of this pretty high quality molded plastic which I rather like and the mounting options are still the same. You can either have them facing forward in their kind of flat position that's useful if they're already at ear level or if they're down low you can flip out these front feet and they'll point upwards towards you. Now just the same as the original models these can also be mounted on a microphone stand and if you've got that option I think it's the best option because it really helps in terms of isolating the monitor from the rest of the furniture in your studio. Now one way in which the pro versions are different is their size. They're around about one inch larger in all directions according to the specifications. That may be important for you when you're thinking about your desk space. However, it's not the only way kind of physically that they're quite different. Now the original version version had both the power supply and all of the amplification crammed into one of the monitors with a cable leading to the other monitor for sound. Well it's quite different with this Pro version. They're both completely independent with their own power supply and their own amplification. Now I know that some of you may see this as a bit of an inconvenience because now you've got an extra power cable to deal with but overall I would suggest it's quite a big improvement. First of all you don't have all of that electronics crammed into one small space. It's kind of spread out a little bit, which is usually an advantage. And the other reason I think this is an advantage, and by the way, I'm no speaker cabinet expert, but I would imagine the fact that they're both now physically almost identical to each other and they're going to respond bond acoustically the same as each other should surely be an advantage. If you do happen to be an expert in speaker cabinet design, chime in down below please and correct me if I'm wrong. With both versions you can connect up to your audio interface using an unbalanced RCA cable. However, with the Pro version you've also got the option of using a balanced XLR connection. Now this is a big improvement in my opinion because with balanced connections you've got way less chance of noise and interference which is a big deal in a studio environment. However, there is one way in which we have less connectivity with the Pro version, and that's the fact we don't have Bluetooth. The original did, these don't. I'm not sure in a studio monitor that we're normally looking for that, but let me know in the comments down below if that is a con for you. Also at the rear, we've got a few switches to help us change the sound of these monitors depending on our listening environment. The top switch enables us to switch the different profiles. We've got a calibration profile which we'll talk about later. We've got a flat profile. That's usually for when you've got them on stands of some kind. And then you've got your desktop profile, which is suitable for when you do indeed have them sitting on a desk. We then have a switch to help us make changes to high frequencies, another one for low frequencies, and then a low frequency extension switch, which basically enables us to switch between a low frequency filter at either 80 Hertz or down to 50 Hertz. That can be useful again, depending on your listening environment. Now you'll need to check the links in the description down below, because at the time of making this video, I'm not sure if you can buy these monitors individually. However, I do know that if you buy them as a pair, then you also get this ARC calibration microphone from IK Multimedia. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's basically a specialized microphone. And when you use it with their ARC, 
Mark III system. It will measure your room and it will calibrate your monitors with little frequency response changes so that they're best suited for your particular listening environment. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this calibration process. You can hook this microphone up to each individual speaker and just press some buttons on the back with some specific combinations and calibrate in that way or you can use my much preferred method, which is to use their software. Let's take a look at that now. The calibration process starts from within some software called X-Monitor, which we will discuss later. But once we start calibration, we're walked through all of the steps with some really easy to understand instructions, which include telling us where to set up our microphone for calibration. Now with each monitor, we have to go through these steps and there's four basic positions where it will capture the test signal and come up with a calibration profile for each monitor. Once we've done this, we can apply those profiles within X Monitor. Now, the great thing is we're not using a plugin within our door or anything like this. This is actually applied to the monitors themselves. So it's going to be there until we change it, no matter what software we're using on our computer. The X Monitor software gives you control over your monitors via USB, and you get a few more options if you do it this way rather than using the buttons around the back. So for example, with this software, I can actually change the crossover point of my low, mid and high frequencies. I could then go ahead and do say a boost there on those low frequencies and you'll see how that cutoff point is affecting them there. I could also, for example, switch on my desk mode like so. And those cutoff points are then gonna allow me to fine tune that mode as well. So lots of flexibility there. We can also emulate some other speakers using this software so if we go back to our normal view you can go up to the top here and select a voice now let's say we want to hear how our mix is going to sound on a smartphone I'd simply go down to multimedia across the smartphone and it's going to employ a curve there which is going to emulate the speaker on a smartphone we could also say choose a 49 inch TV and it'll emulate that as well so it's really a quick way of seeing if your mix is likely to translate to other speaker systems. Now, if you've got a favorite four types of speaker that you'd like to test on, then you can use these presets down here. So you can assign any of those voices to these four presets down here to quickly switch between different listening environments. Now, before we move on to my opinions about the sound and suitability of these monitors, I think it's important to mention that I am not being sponsored by IK Multimedia for this video. Video. However, I am being sponsored by DistroKid. Now, if you're releasing your music to places like Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, etc., don't forget to follow the VIP link in the description down below for DistroKid, and you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. Surprising is going to be a word that's used a lot with these monitors in people's reviews, and they're mainly going to be referring to the low end. Because usually when we see monitors like this and we see how small they are, we assume that the low end response is going to be absolute rubbish. But they definitely do surprise you in this way. But I want to keep us real about this. This doesn't mean they have the same kind of sound as like an eight or a seven inch monitor or something like that. They don't. It's just that they are pretty good for their size. Now, if you're in a small listening environment, that's actually a really good thing because in a really small environment, like eight or seven inch monitors can be very difficult to control in terms of the low end. So these could actually be a big advantage for you in those cases. Now, in terms of the mid and high range frequencies, I think the mid is nice and detailed. I rather enjoyed it. It feels like it's an honest mid range. It's reasonably flat. It's telling me the detail that I need to hear in the mix. And then with the high frequencies, I would say they're not airy, they're pretty crisp sounding, but I wouldn't describe them as fatiguing at all. I've had these on for a few hours at a time playing music through them and I didn't find them particularly fatiguing, which sometimes monitors can be. So uh, that's a pretty big plus for them there. So 
In terms of who are these for, well, let's talk about that. As you may have guessed, I can certainly recommend these monitors to people who are working in a smaller environment. First of all, they're physically small, which is really helpful when you've got a cramped desk. And also with their sound, it's gonna be much easier to control it in a smaller environment. But I wouldn't be looking at these monitors as your main monitors in a large listening environment. Yeah, they're pretty loud, but they wouldn't fill that space in quite the right kind of way. However, if you do have a larger listening environment, I would definitely consider these as your second monitors. Many producers will have their main monitors and grab a pair of second monitors so that they can focus on the mid range. That can be very, very helpful indeed. And as well, if you're just working on non-critical listening tasks, say like editing, it can be nice just to have a simple pair of kind of fun monitors to listen to your music through when you're working on those kinds of tasks. I'm intrigued to know how many of you have been using the original versions. Are you tempted to upgrade to these pro versions? Do you even see it as an upgrade? Let me know about that in the comments down below. And thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope to see you in the next video.